We have developing news out of Wycliffe, where a high school cheer coach is now on administrative leave for her handling of two cheerleaders in sensitive social media posts and her treatment of a black cheerleader who complained. Jasmine Amaro has the very latest. Cheer is supposed to be like a family. 16-year-old Jasmine Rembert is not shy when it comes to standing up for what's right. I'm so sorry, but it's 2021. We're not taking any steps forward. We're taking steps back, and it's because of people like you. It was this very video that got her temporarily kicked off the Wycliffe High School competition cheer squad after confronting two of her teammates who mocked police brutality on social media. I have, I have a life. Please. <laughs> One student used homophobic slurs, made fun of a disabled cheerleader, and told a black student to go pick cotton. It's not like she was just some girl in school. Like I let her over my house several times, birthday parties with her, stuff like that. Um, so I was hurt by her words. Many joined in pleading for the video to be deleted, but Jasmine says it remained up for hours until the students started to receive death threats. That's when they reached out to the coach for help. But instead of helping defuse the tension, Coach Jessica Hofton followed up with a text to Jasmine about her video. Your public snap was a reflection on you, cheer, and the school. As far as cheerleading, it is my discretion on how or when to punish the girls on the team without a public monologue from someone who's supposed to be her teammate on one of those teams. Then Coach Jess finalized her messages with me by telling me that I was no longer a part of her team. Superintendent Joe Specia later explained that Coach Jessica's actions were unacceptable. Um, I, I think her intent was, was good, um, but I think that she needed to spend a little more time in looking at everything that was going on uh, that led to, to the uh, text message she sent to um, uh, Jasmine. After receiving that text, Jasmine said if it wasn't for her mother, she would have been left with the guilt of feeling like a bully for using her voice. And I don't regret it, but then I feel like I do because now I'm looked at as, you know, like this girl who's a bully and, you know, she's black, she, she's mean, she's going to bully this girl, you know, stuff like that. And I don't want to be looked at like that because that's not the kind of person I am. Really tough story this morning. I also want to note that we reached out to both of those students who were in that video and we also reached out to the coach. We did not get a response. I also want to mention that coach Jess is on administrative leave pending this investigation. Now, as for those two girls who were in that video, they were allowed to stay on the team. They just weren't able to cheer during the games. That's at least what we're told. So of course, Maureen, this story is developing as we speak. Yeah, it's heartbreaking to see this go back and forth, but what does Jasmine, the student, want to see happen? So pretty much when we talked, she just says she wants the school to be more aware, listen to black voices, black women voices, black little girl voices, and just stating that she wants to learn more about saying harsh words and how that affects people on a daily basis inside of the school, whether that's a program or an assembly, she wants to see something done. Yeah, and it's a great reminder that we as parents, you know, we can teach some lessons at home to make sure that these things don't happen once our kids get to school. All right, Jasmine, thank you so right. much.